So I was on FaceTime a couple weeks ago with my younger sister and she made some flippant comment as only a younger sibling can uh, about my balding and I was quick to say no 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 not balding just my forehead is growing larger as my hairline recedes but as you can see the hair I have left is thick and luscious I just choose to have a short haircut. Anyway it's not important for the purpose of any of these other videos I just wanted to let uh, her know that Thick and luscious hair, forehead, getting bigger, not balding. Um, all right, back to the video. What is up everyone? Welcome back for another video. This week I'm gonna be talking about how to eddy line squirt, also known as tail squirt, also known, uh, I think only in New Zealand, as a whoopee. Uh, how to do an eddy line squirt for half slice boats. Really excited to make this video, mostly because I've got a really fun new half slice boat to paddle all the time. So I thought this would be just be a fun thing uh, for me to to film. Maybe hopefully it'll be useful for you too. But it was fun for me to make, so um, yeah. Hopefully you you get some use out of it too. So what is uh, eddy line squirt? As I just showed, hopefully in the overlay, um, it's where you use the power of an eddy line to sink the stern end of your boat under the water. Can you do this in any kind of boat? No, you kind of need either a freestyle boat with a, a short tail or a half slice boat like this Antics 2, uh, which is so much fun for, for this. An eddy line squirt could be anything from just a little bit of, of bow lift all the way to fully vertical. We're gonna use basically the same technique for either. And there's a few different points I'm gonna run you through from correct eddy line sight selection to what to do with your body, what to do with your edges and kind of things like that. So. Let's get right down to it. First off, let's talk about a good eddy line for tail squirts. Uh, I am mostly not looking for like the biggest, harshest difference uh, between the main current and the, the eddy that I'm in. I'm kind of looking for one which is um, reasonably strong moving main current with not too much current in the eddy. If you think about the way the water's moving, we've got that downstream current going one way and the eddy current kind of goes in the other direction, right? It goes in a circle, but let's just say for the, this example, they're going in these two different directions. We're looking for a nice strong connection point because where those two forces interact, that's where the eddy line meets and we get these like swirly kind of powerful eddy lines. What we're looking for is one which is strong but not overwhelmingly powerful because that's going to let us kind of control what's happening a bit more with our boat and with our edges. If we try and find one which is just like the, the biggest, gnarliest, hardest eddy line you can find. You might be able to get some good squirts there, but also you might find you get out of control a bit too fast. So kind of pick your battle ground pretty carefully here. And that's what I look for, one which has strong main current and then the eddies moving, but not moving super, super fast. Next up, let's talk about whereabouts we're gonna be crossing the eddy line. Generally higher up is better, but you do need to be careful of shallow spots like I found in this spot. Um, when I was too high at the, at the top of the eddy line, then uh, I was kind of bottoming out a lot more. So you need to find that kind of happy point, which is going to be different for every single eddy line. Generally speaking, we're going to be at the more upstream end of those eddy lines because that's where the, the differential current is more noticeable. So there's more of a strong uh, line that we're crossing. and We're going to use that spot of the line to help us kind of sink our tail and get that eddy line squirt. If you go way further down the eddy line, you might find you the eddy line kind of runs out of power as it sprays it sprays out. So that's gonna make it more challenging and, and something to keep in mind. So once you've selected your eddy line, you're gonna approach it, approach the spot where you're gonna initiate your tail squirt at a medium speed. Now we wanna carry a little speed at the start. Once you get proficient at this, you'll be able to do it with more speed and with less speed and you'll get a better feel for it. But to start with, just start at medium and then we've got a bit of room to speed up or a bit of room to slow down if we have to. As well as being at medium speed, we wanna approach a kind of a 45 degree angle, exactly like we're doing a classic peel out to go downstream. As you're approaching the eddy line, trying to let your boat run for that last kind of one boat length as you're crossing the eddy line, that kind of frees up your body and paddle to start getting ready for the next step. Again, as you get more proficient at this, you'll have to think about this stuff less and less, but for now, 
just we're trying to make it as simple as possible. As your boat starts crossing the eddy line, let your bow start turning downstream and kind of picking up speed. You're kind of almost getting some building momentum there um, or kind of changing the momentum you have. I know if it's more changing direction or building momentum. I like to say building momentum. So let your bow, bow start going downstream and you're still gonna be carrying momentum out of the eddy line kind of as you're crossing over the eddy line. So your bow is starting to go downstream, but your boat is still traveling out uh, into that eddy line, like almost into the main current. As your butt crosses the eddy line, this is where we're gonna have to do a couple of things simultaneously. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is starting to drop our upstream edge. Now this is the opposite to what your brain is conditioned to. So for all your time learning to kayak, you've been lifting that upstream edge when you leave an eddy, and now we're gonna be dropping it. So at first, if you haven't tried these before, it's gonna feel very weird because you're kind of going against something you've been taught this whole time, but it's gonna pay off once you can get that eddy line squirt uh, over and over again. So just keep in, keep in mind, at first, it's gonna feel a bit weird. So like I said, start dropping that upstream edge. Don't think about cranking it down all, all in one go. We're actually gonna be kind of doing a slow, uh, constant edge drop. So as you start to drop that edge, you're gonna start dropping your, uh, your back angle a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and you're just gonna keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And what that's gonna do is just encourage your stern to catch into that water where underneath you, the main current is meeting the eddy because that's where a lot of the river's power is, like right, right in that zone. At the same time as you're starting to drop that upstream edge, you're also gonna be winding up your body. So start by looking back towards the eddy, wind up your body ready to do a big back sweep stroke on the same side as, as you were just coming from. So essentially on your downstream side. So in this example, you can see that as I cross the eddy line, the first thing I do is look to the right, wind up my body, and then put that big back sweep stroke in as I continue to drop that edge. So there's a lot of things happening all at once here. And that's kind of why these can be very challenging for some people is because you have to put a lot of different pieces together all at the same time. Now the reason it's important to make sure you're looking first is because we want to encourage our whole body to turn back. So th this gives us a lot more core power to put into that back sweep stroke. The more you can look and turn your body so that both shoulders are pointing in the same direction, the more core power you can engage and the easier it is to slam your stern under the water. As you unwind on that pushing back sweep stroke, try and keep your paddle in that kind of like power box position. So um, if you imagine like bent arms, slightly bent arms like out in front of you and there's like a little, a little box there, try and keep that box nice and strong as you unwind and that's again forcing more of that core power engagement keep cranking that edge on and what you should find is you'll get to this kind of tipping point where your your stern edge just catches and flings you up into a nice sweet vertical tail squirt or whoopee whatever you call it if you want to hold on to that tail squirt once you get it all the way to vertical you can lean your head and body back into the water and this means your boat's now going to be kind of vertical and you're just going to be controlling it with your feet and your knees so if it starts to come over on top of you you can push your body down and push up with your feet and that's going to bring your boat back to vertical. And if it starts to dip away from you, you can crunch in and pull your knees up towards you. But by putting your body and your head into the water, you're actually kind of almost taking their like their weight out of the balance game you're playing now. It just makes it a little bit easier for you to manage. Of course, you don't have to balance on that, on that end at all. You might just want to do a fun pirouette and then keep on moving downstream, which can be really fun too. But if you did want to balance, that's how you do it. Some really common errors uh, with this maneuver. Um, mostly it's picking an inappropriate eddy. So either one which is too shallow or too powerful or moves at the wrong speed relative to the speed of the eddy. And again, once you get proficient at these, you can do them in a lot more places. But um, to start with, you're looking for that like kind of strong main current, slow moving eddy water. Um, that's gonna, gonna lead you to the best outcome. Next most common problems are timing. So either starting too early or too late. So if you start this, once you're still in the eddy, you're not really gonna get the benefit of that eddy line water to, to snap your boat up into vertical. And the same if you start it once you're too far into the main current, you're just gonna flip over upside down. So you gotta keep that in mind. It's a lot about timing, like a lot of things in kayaking. 
Uh, the amount of edge you use is also another common fault. So either not enough or too much, not enough. You're just gonna do like a flat spin basically, too much you're gonna flip over. So again, you gotta balance that, how much, how much is enough. And the more you practice, the more you find out exactly where it is and it kind of differs a little bit from boat to boat. So that's worth keeping in mind. And the final thing that I see people kind of messing up with this a lot is this kind of looking uh, in the wrong direction. They're looking like down at their bow, waiting to see it pop up into the air. When in reality, you need to be looking back towards the area you came from, because that's gonna turn your body and that's gonna give you maximum core power engagement, which is gonna give you the most kind of bang for your buck in terms of that back sweep stroke. If you are looking down at your boat, probably nothing's gonna happen or you're gonna flip over because you're just not setting yourself up to succeed by recruiting as many muscles as possible. And like a lot of things when we're kayaking, especially when we're doing tricks, you wanna recruit as much of that muscle power as you can to make it as easy as possible for you. So something to keep in mind. All right, so that's been my kind of quick run through on how to tail squirt in a half slice boat. The same thing applies to a freestyle kayak if you want to do the same thing. Um, it's going to be a little different in terms of the amount of edge you put on, but uh, it's certainly kind of mostly the same steps. And yeah, that's, uh, that's it. That's all for this week. Hopefully I will see you next week. Peace.